trowels in your hands in the air. Three, two, one, let's lay some bricks! This is what it's all about. Let's keep it cranked up. Watch this brick lay it. So let's get a chance to meet everybody as we get to the beginning of Bricklayer 5. Champion. And Becker. Sontag, Johnny Harvey, Install number six, champion Fred K. Tender High. Number six, Cesar Silva. Yorga. Sean in ten. Number eleven. On Your 2022 Top Craftsman winner, Scott Tuttle and Tender, Brian Tuttle. Install number 14, Mason Riston McGee and Tender, Brian 
fast. In stall number 15, your Mason Carlos Zamudio and tender Diego De Lara. In stall number 16, Mason Mark Saxa and tender Graydon Wachter. In stall number 17, Mason Juan Sanchez and tender Justin Wise. In stall number 18, your Mason, Luis Prado and tender Eduardo Ramirez. In stall number 19, Mason Howard Cole and tender Martin Avendano. In stall number 20, Mason Dakota Bessemer and tender Nate Chip. In stall number 21, your Mason, James Courier, and tender, Alexis Aquino. In stall number 22, Mason, Mario Hernandez, and tender, Gerson Luck. In stall 23, your Mason, Real Voigt, and tender, Glenn Potter. And rounding out your 24 teams for the 2023 championships, your Mason, Grant Helms, and tender, Anderson Pruitt. This is your wild card winner, to complete all the stalls to determine who is the world's best bricklayer. He is our youngest Mason in the field today at 21 years old. He's also the youngest in the history of the Spec Mix Bricklayer 500. And now, ladies and gentlemen, We'd like to pause for just a moment. The Iowa team was announced early on. We'd like to have a moment of silence for Tommy Isaac's Mason Tender, who passed away unexpectedly and will not be with us here at the Spec Mix Bricklayer 500. Let us take a moment for Angel Martinez. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It is now time to get the Nellis Air Force Base in place and get Annalise Mahanes from IMY2 to sing our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the color guard from Nellis Air Force Base. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what 
but so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet Campbell get win number four. Unheard of. Can he do it? He'd be the Tom Brady of bricklaying. We're going to check that all out in just a second. Let's get the mud on the boards, and we're going to get things underway. We're going to have all the tenders and all the masons outside of their arena right now. Everybody who is here, stand on your stall numbers. Go to your stall numbers right now. Let's stand on the outside of the arena. I'd like to put 60 minutes on the clock, if you would, and then we'll get things underway. Once I see that 60, there it is. We're going to get things started. All teams are out of the arena at this time. Judges, if you are good to go. Masons, if you are ready. Trowels up in the air, Masons. Let's see, everybody. Good luck. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world's best bricklayer here in Las Vegas, the 2023 edition, the Spec Mix Bricklayer 500. On my mark, I'll count it down. Here we go. In five, four, three, two, one. Let's lay some brick.
over the past 134 years, Stabila has learned a valuable lesson. Create tools that can tell their own story. Hey, welcome back to the Spec Mix Bricklayer 500. I'm looking at the clock. We got just right at 53 minutes left. And I want you to look behind me. You can see the crowd. Hey, it's like I'm doing the weather right there. We've got the crowds rolling in from the east right now over into the north side. But everything is just all the way around the arena. You can see how and we even got a guy waving over there. He has nothing to do with anything, but he's going to try to start the wave. I love it. But that's what this is all about right here, the support that's going on, because you've got family, you've got friends. At one time, Fred Campbell brought a busload of 40 people from Tennessee all the way to Las Vegas. That's how much they love the actual industry. And somebody who's been a big part of the industry for a long time is a gentleman by the name of Darian Douthit. He is a four-time craftsman winner here at the Spec Mix Bricklayer 500. You want a guy to build a wall for you? You want a guy to build a house for you or anything? This guy builds a great wall. Sean, I know you got him at the game day desk. Yes, Tom, thank you. Darren, welcome back to the Spec Mix Bricklayer 500. Thank you. But, you know, four years of winning that craftsmanship award, and what does it feel like sitting here in street clothes right now, not being in the mix? A lot less pressure. Oh, well, yeah, for sure. Yeah, a lot less pressure. That's what you said? Yes, sir. But yes, it's got to be a little bit disappointing as well. It is, but uh, I'll try it again this year. Okay. You got to go so through regionals. You got to go back through the, the qualifying process. You don't get that automatic revisit. Um, but how about, tell me a little bit, are, are you rooting for Mr. Tuttle now? I mean, he took that, that fifth away from you. It's hard not to uh, root for the Tuttles. They're, uh, they're just part of uh, the Bricklayer 500 every year. The name is synonymous with yes. the Spec Mix Bricklayer 500. But I, I'm, yeah. I'm pulling for my boy Carlos from Oklahoma, so. Uh. That, that's right, that's right. Well, I'm, I'm loving that you're up here with us. Unfortunately, you know, you're not, you are in the street clothes, but next year, we hope you're back in the hunt here and going after that, that Kubota RTB. You need I, another, right? I, I would love to have another one. Fantastic. I'll see you next Darren, year. We appreciate you being up here. Tom, it's always a pleasure talking with Darren Douthit, and uh, he's going to be back in the hunt next year. Keep your eyes open for him. You know, it's amazing that he won it four times. I mean, we've been doing this for 20 years, so it's just like, you know, he's the greatest of all time for the wall builder. We got Fred Campbell, uh, the same thing. We got a couple of really amazing mason contractors with us. But if you want to see how our champ is doing right now, you got to bring it down to Will Scott. Will, I know you're looking at Cole Stamper. How's he starting off so far? Yeah, you, you're going to hear this name over. You're going to hear this name over and over today. Cole Stamper, last year's winner. He is absolutely flying. I think he is a touch ahead of pace from last year. He's already got about a seven-course lead that he's built on one side, only about a four on the other. And he's going ahead and spreading the wall. You can see all the mortar running. And he's going ahead and laying the back side first. Not everyone does this. A lot of guys feel more comfortable laying to the front side of the wall. It's what they do every day. This is something we don't see very often. So he's going ahead and getting the most difficult thing out of the way right off the bat. Really excited to keep checking in with him throughout the day. All right, thanks a lot, Will. And you talk about somebody doing the back side of the wall first and fast. I'm down here in stall 24 with Grant Helms, and you want to talk about flying? You remember the race between Superman and the Flash? I think this is what we're going to have. Grant working on the back side of the wall. He is absolutely toasting it right now. It is great. Working hard over here in stall number 22, the tender grabbing buckets of mud, slapping it on the gator back. These guys are absolutely flying. I'm going to predict it right now, Will. Sean, everybody, I think we're going to set a new record for bricks. 760 was last year. It's been a while since we've seen 800. But I'm telling you what, right now, we're, somebody's going to lay 800. I have no doubt in my mind. All right, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll get things underway. 48 minutes left. 48 minutes on the clock. So we're almost one quarter of the way in. 
We've got some goodies we're going to give away, too. My buddy Brian Carney, the vice president of Spec Mix, he goes, hey, there's a lot of people in the crowd. Anybody in the crowd like some giveaways right now? Uh, that's not loud enough. And if you don't yell, you don't get anything. Y'all want something? Much better. We'll be right back. We got some swag for those in the audience. Looking for ways to be more productive? Look no further than the all-electric e-Transit. Built with the same cargo space as America's best-selling van, pairing the e-Transit with e-Telematics will be the workhorse of your fleet. Introducing a productivity accelerator for your business. Ford Pro. We're about a quarter of the way done right over here. I got Let me get, get all these orange shirts over here from Helms Masonry. Hey, come on over here for a second, guys. Come on over here. We got, uh, we got, so I, I see Jody Helms over here. So I got to know, uh, uh, hey, hey, okay. Now what relation, you're, you're his mom? And so how's he doing? How's he doing so far? Here, you get a mic. All right. I don't, I don't need to do this anymore. I'll just let her take care of everything. Introduce everybody. Who you got here with you? This is Lauren. Uh, I'm Anderson's girlfriend. Uh -huh. I'm Rodney, the masonry instructor. Okay. Oh, you're the instructor? Okay, I'm going to talk to you in a second. All right, see what's trying to Okay, hang on a second. I'm going to roll over here. So you actually taught this guy right here. Yes, sir. Now, how's he doing so far? And is there a certain method that you teach for speed? Well, he's pretty much taught himself. I mean, this kid works extremely hard, and uh, he's just a good one to be around and watch. Okay, now obviously he's not the only one. Tell us where you're an instructor at. I'm an instructor at West Rowan High School in uh, North Carolina. And you know, you know Ryan Shaver and uh, uh, all the things that he's done in that area. Just how important is it to get trowels in kids' hands these days? Oh, it's very important. I mean, there's a lot of them that just uh, don't really know their future at that point, and you just try to help direct them in that, in that pathway. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Guys, well, good luck. It's good luck to all the teams. I'm glad you guys are out here supporting. Um, I'm going to put this microphone away now and just ask, anybody in the crowd want a hat? Anybody? See, anytime you got swag, let's see, I got a guy up on the steel deck over there. Let's see if I can get it. Sorry. Sorry. I played second base, not third base, so I'm not sure over there. Let's go throw. Anybody want a hat? Here we go. Come on. Come on. Get the hats. Over there on that side. Uh, hang on, I'll get that for you. Hey, Jody, you definitely get a hat. Good luck right back there. All right, I'm going to throw it over to Sean O'Malley and Will Scott. They're taking a look at some of the stalls over there. Uh, you guys got some goodies, too, to give away? Yeah, we've got some swag. But before, before we even get to that part, you know, you got a nice fan base over there. I've got one that's even better, and they're excited. I am with the Bachetti Fan Club here. Are we excited or what? All right, we're, we're, we're talking about instructors. Now, Phil is an instructor, right? Yes, he is at Williamson. He, he at the, the Williamson trades. College for the Trades, yes, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And so he's got a lot of fan support here, a lot so of youngsters. Some of, the, some of you are actually competing in the Junior Bricklayer competition, right? So we got, we got Team Bichetti over here. They're excited. Let's keep them rolling. All right, so now, yeah, I think we do want to get some swag going here. 
Who wants some, some free swag here? Let's get it rolling. Let's roll. Here we go. You got to keep pumping up these audiences. <laughs> hey, is this side more excited? We, we got to be louder than Tom Clark. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. All right, one more. It's a boomerang. All right. I know my side is excited. Oh, no, your side's not excited. I'll tell you exactly how excited they are. Very American. Over here, I'm standing beside the Canadians. Oh. Hi. Tech. You'll hear the name chanted, Sontag. He's ready to lay some brick. I'll tell you what, I'm going to toss just a few over here. Don't be fighting over it now. But while I got this camera around me, we're going to actually stroll over to Dave Sontag's uh, stall. He's in number two right now. This is not something you see ever. This is literally the first time in bricklayer history I've ever seen this. He has a lead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If he fills out this course, that is 1,000 brick goal as he set himself up. Very impressive. We're going to keep moving down here. Hey! going over there. You got Team Green and Team Orange. I do. Are we're we, not going to get we, too far. We're going to find out who's the real. Oh, oh, you're right. This can't be. This can't be. Oh, no. That poor cameraman. If there is a polar opposite of Canada, it's Kentucky and it's right behind me. Yep. Yep. If you win this thing one time, apparently you can afford to fly your entire family out to see this show. Sean, where are you right now? I am over here at Bichetti Stall, stall number 12. And a couple of really interesting feats here. He's using an old school Marshalltown trowel that actually is called a Coke trowel. If we could just zoom in on that trowel, we're not going to get close. But look at that Coke trowel right there. And he's also going with a method called a pick and dip. Now, we've seen a, a past winners of regionals, the Johnny Langerap that's out there doing a pick and dip in the day, and made it work. It's not normally applied, but here, Mr. Buschetti's trying to make this method work where everyone else is building those huge leads. You're not seeing that here. He's spotting a brick, and he's running. We're going to keep an eye on this as this develops. Tom, are you still out there? You yeah. got some excitement going on here. I think I can see you. You know, I am. As a matter of fact, I'm over here with three-time champ Fred Campbell. And when Will was describing how Mr. Sontag had a 10, you know, a 10 lead build, here's our champ. He doesn't have anything up there. Looks like he's doing maybe a little bit over on that side. But right now, you can see four rows, no leads. So what's the right way to do it? He's shooting for 1,000. But Fred, does he know something that the others don't? Because he's already got three trucks. We don't know. It's not going to happen until later on when we get all the judges going and we figure out what is that adjusted brick count. Looking at the wall right now, I see we've got 40 minutes left. We're one-third of the way of the competition. It's over. Crowd, I want to hear it. We're one-third done. That guy is still behind me. He's trying to start the wave. I'm not sure about him, but I guess we'll leave him in there. So we got things hopping up pretty good right now. What do you say? We just turn on some music, let these guys lay some brick, and we'll give our uh, MCs in the crowd a little bit of a break. We'll let you know what's going on in just a second. Mr. DJ, crank it up a little bit. Let's give these guys some noise.
Hydromobile is a privately owned Canadian company that specializes in the design, manufacturing and distribution of mast climbing work platforms for the construction industry. Our engineering team continuously improves our line of products and quality levels, helping Hydromobile stay ahead of the competition and remain the industry leader. Player 500. We got about 35 minutes and change left. 35 minutes and they are working hard. I'm standing over here in, uh, I don't know, I guess you want to call it the prize stage. And I want to point something out that the folks from Steel did. This is just the coolest award ever. Now, this is actually going to go to the winner. We're going to pop that in the back of the Ford truck. But you can see the beautiful Spec Mix logo right here. It's all smoothed out. Got a little burn on it. I know he had the torch out there. This is absolutely incredible. But of course, you see the other stuff here that's going to be going to all of our winners. IQ Power Tools, Razorback, Marshalltown, the Essex Mixer. Over to my right, we've got the RTV X1140. Over to my left, the keys to the brand new F250 Super Duty 4x4. I mean, these are all amazing prizes, and we're so grateful to all of our sponsors. This right here, this would be hanging in my man cave. I'm telling you what, this is absolutely, ridiculously cool. I love this right here. All right, we got a little bit over 30 minutes left, so I want to throw it over to Sean O'Malley. Sean, what stall are you in? What is happening? Yeah, we're starting to see these strategies really come to play now. I'm over in stall 15, Carlos's stall here. And I heard you make mention earlier about the leads. Now, I want to bring up the leads here. It's a risky business. The taller they build the lead, the more time they're going slow doing that level work versus being in the middle of their wall. That's where all the speed comes. So Carlos is actually running a risky strategy here. He built a really tall lead. It spent him a lot of time to get it constructed on both sides. Now he's filling in the middle. You're going to see his brick count go through the roof, but is it going to pay off at the end of the day? We don't know quite yet, but we're just going to keep an eye out for it. You can see he's set up for any kind of backup that he might need. He's got line blocks in case one line snaps. He can actually bring up another really quick. So I tell you, these strategies, there's a lot of different techniques out there. Let's see how Carlos does here in just a little bit. Tom, you got hey. some more action down your way? Yeah, I do, as a matter of fact, uh, sitting behind me right here. I'm back at the back end, stalls 9, 10, 11. You know, JT Payne has thrown up some big numbers in his career. I've seen him before, and I'm looking at him. Not only does the wall look like he's keeping up with everybody else, but it looks like a good wall as well, which means you could be the top craftsman. We got some goods we're giving away right now. This is the really cool Mudslinger hat, the Spec Mix Bricklayer 500. So we got some swag. The walls are getting there, checking the clock, 33 minutes, not quite at the halfway point. So let's check in with Will Scott right now, our color man on the scene. Will, who are you looking at? I'll tell you what, Mr. Tom, I'm standing over here in stall number 23 with Mr. Voigt. 
Now, these guys were out of Canada. They were not able to come due to the pandemic, but they were a regional winner. They deserved this spot. We were happy to put them in here, and it looks like they're working double time for missing a year. Very, very impressive work so far. Sean talked a little bit about the leads. It looks like that's what we're working on. They've got them built up. They're going to take a couple extra brick here to help pin down their lines to make them nice and straight. So as they lay their next course, they're landing nice and flush. So again, quality in this stall is unbelievably impressive. Sean, do you have anything going on anywhere close to you? Yeah, I'm over here in the famous number, the very first stall, Cole Stamper's Ball. He's just added an extra four, five courses on top of his already monster wall. And this is really cool. Something that the people at home might not be aware of, within the spec mix rules, we have that if a person qualifies for the national events two years in a row, they've actually got to take a year off. So Cole finds himself in a real predicament here. The only way to get around that is to win this event. So if he doesn't win this event today, he's going to have to take a break next year and watch from the cheap seats. Tell you, Will, it's a pressure cooker going on down here. I'm sure you got some, some Masons down there that are giving it their best. You got some excitement on your end. I'll tell you what. I'm standing over here in stall number 10, and you talked a little bit about the tenders. Very impressive work over here with the communication. It's unbelievably important. If these guys are not communicating, the mason or the tender will not know where to put the brick for the mason to make it a nice, smooth grab. Let's take a shot at what they're doing over here. He's shoveling mud. He's going ahead and grabbing this brick. He's tossing it up in front of him about two high, two to three high. That's what he likes. And he usually puts a little bit of a 45 on it. He cocks the brick a little bit to make it easier for the mason to grab. So again, this communication before and during the competition is unbelievably important. the judges, David Adams, who is uh, actually a Mason instructor as well. And Dave, what do the judges actually look for when you're sitting here? I mean, each stall has their own judge, and you guys have to keep an eye on something. What are some of the uh, intricacies that you look for, disqualification, um, point deduction? What exactly is it you have your eye on? Oh, we're looking, uh, looking to see if there is any uh, shiners where the bricks are turned backwards. Uh, any excessive lipping or spots where, okay, we're going to go back to that and see if they were, if they fixed it. Um, we're also looking to see if there's any discrepancies um, in regards to the Masons are not allowed to make hash marks or level marks on their, on their levels, right? They can't make it like a story pole. So we're checking to make sure that there's no cheating. You know, you guys are pretty particular. I mean, there was a, uh, um, there was a time where there was like, you know, a thousand brick plus and stuff like that. They've uh, taken the specs, they've made it a little bit tighter, and that's why we have a judge now everywhere because, you know, these are good walls. These are really good walls oh, yeah. these guys are putting up. Putting a lot of brick in. In one hour, guys, they're, they're doing what people lay in a day. Yeah. So it's, in an hour. It's pretty amazing, right? I'm going to let you get back because I know you got to keep your eye on there. Uh, but we've got the folks from Homan and Bernard here. Let's turn around real quick. And uh, we got the Homan and Bernard crew out here. We got some hats that they're giving away, so you could get some swag like that in the crowd. Now, as I'm looking, you know, right over here, Michael Slun from Wisconsin, nobody's talking about how high this wall is right here. You guys rooting for Michael? I can't hear it. I can't hear it. Who's the biggest Michael fan? Come here, wife. You got to have the wife, and I like the wife already. She got a Bud Light rocking over here in the crowd. Okay, so I need to know, first of all, how long has he been laying brick, and is it generational? Are there other people in the past? Or is he a first-timer? First-timer. First-timer? Yeah, there you go. You first-timer. Is he? How does he do? I mean, it looks like he's actually killing that wall right there. He is. That's, uh, that's pretty awesome. Now, it where is. are you guys from? Wisconsin. Wausau, Wisconsin. W Wisconsin? I like, yeah. Did you bring me some cheese curds or no? No. You didn't? <laughs> she's got cheese curds. I like, she's got cheese curds. What? You're out of cheese curds? They're a little old? All right, I'll let you pass on the cheese curds. All right, let's get back to a little bit of music. Let's get these guys lay some brick. I got 28 minutes and change. 28 and change. Let's get some music going.
itself. You need equipment that's built smart so you can work smarter. That's built to deliver more comfort, more productivity, more get it done right. That's built around a durable Kubota engine you can depend on. With versatile skid steers and track loaders, powerful wheel loaders and reliable compact excavators, the Kubota construction lineup shows up ready to work every day. Visit us at booth number C6560. Kubota is a proud sponsor of the Spec Mix Bricklayer 500. Just three words tell you everything you need to know. They tell you why we employ more than 2,000 workers at our factory in Virginia Beach, and why over 10,000 local steel dealers are putting battery power in the hands of Americans. Not everyone can say that, but we can. Made in America. Real steel. Find yours. Spec Mix Brick Layer 500 event, our 21st year of bringing you hardcore in your face masonry. Well, I'm over here at a legendary stall number six. Guess who it is? Three time winner, Fred Campbell from East Tennessee. He's going after number four. Is he going to be the victor at the end of the day? I don't know. He's working with his tender here, and I want you to focus and take a look at what they have done. They have set their bricks in very unique positions so that Fred can efficiently and quickly pick up that brick without even looking back. He just grabs it, snaps it in the wall, and he's on to the next. This is how Fred stays competitive and he's hopefully going to be on top of the podium at the end of the day. He's got a lot of fans out there in uh, the internet land, social media land, and he's going to impress like no other. We appreciate it. Now, we're going to keep this action going here. Will, I know you're, you've are you got some stuff that's going on over at your end. Give me a quick update. What do you got? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what, Sean. I'll tell you what, Sean. I'll tell you what, Sean. I am over here in stall number 18. We're going to keep the camera right here on where he's laying. He is absolutely flying. If that pan camera pans even a little bit to me, you will see a crowd of people chanting, Eddie Luis, Eddie Luis, Eddie Luis. Texas is absolutely showing out. Mira bien, you see, yes. It looks unbelievably good. As you can see, he's got this stability level. We're going to step back just a few steps so you can see it. It's a precision tool. He's taking his time, making sure that lead is absolutely perfect. Really great to have critical tools at critical moments, Sean. Hey, hey guys, I'm over here with the Pichetti crew, the Pichetti brothers. We got the red team over here, and there's lots of Pichetti. Who do I give the mic to? Who, where are the wives at? Where are the wives? Oh, no, no, Jenna, you, come on. All right, all right. which Pichetti are you attached to over there? Phil. You're with Phil? Yes. All right, and you're with the other one? Yes. Okay, cool. Now, the, how long have these guys been working together? I, well, I know, but I mean, how long? I mean, 15 years? How, how many? Right. Wow, right before the show. Yeah. Let's have a couple of beers. Let's go build a wall. I mean, now, uh, uh, do we go back generational within your family? Um, or are these guys first time Masons? Yeah, Phil, Phil started, started it. it. Yeah. Well, what about the future? Are there other Masons in the future? Maybe that's, Junior over there? That's his son, Brick. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Any thoughts about masonry? Anything coming over there? Or are you going to be a pop star like Justin Bieber? <laughs> I think the Justin Bieber hairdo might have given it away there. So uh, sorry about that. We got some daughters and everything back here Sky as well. Right here. Come here. Elena. Come here. Come here. That's okay. She's on the phone. <laughs> All right, Sky. So yes. which which is your, who's your dad, Phil? Yes. Okay. And what do you think? How's he doing? He's doing great. This now, do these guys practice together too? Oh yeah. How often All do time. they practice? All the time. Oh yeah. All okay. The time. So I'm looking at the wall there, and I've compared them with a couple of the other guys that they're like the favorites, and they're right in there. They're tight with yeah. them. So, you know, okay. when they practice, is there a number there that, you know, that you know what they're doing? Over 700, oh, 750? Yes. You have yeah. any idea? Over 700. Over 700. Yeah, yeah, well, that's going to be in the money right there. So yeah. that's good. All right, Mom, yeah. make sure that she gets an extra phone for that or something, okay? <laughs> that's good. How you doing over there? You all right? What's your name? Lainey. Lainey, who's your dad? Nick. Nick? How do you think he does? Good. Yeah. <laughs> You like when he lays brick? Yeah. Has he ever built you like a girl cave? No. <laughs> Do you think he should? Yes. Something special just for you? 
All right. Well, I'll tell you what. You know that, that you're on camera right now. He has no choice when he gets done, when he gets home, to build you something special, okay? Okay. All right. Tell him good luck. Okay. You can say good luck. Go, good luck, Dad. Go, Nikki. Oh, I like it. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. All right, I'm looking at the clock. We're two-thirds of the way done. We got 20 minutes left, a little over 20 minutes. So let's play some music. Let's let these guys lay some brick. Go, Bichetti! Are you looking for workwear that's tough, functional, and comfortable? Well, it's here. Introducing Blocklauder Workwear. We've been designing and manufacturing workwear built for the trades since 1959. We believe workwear should be more than just ordinary pants and jackets. Workwear should be a tool. Our gear helps you stay protected, look professional, and get more done. It's time to join the revolution. Welcome to the future of workwear. Spec Mix Bricklayer 500. over there looking like a really tough wall he is just flying with mud over there I, I don't I don't hear the stamper crowd at all but wait there's more as will alluded to earlier 
in stall number two, Canada. I love it. And wait a minute. Don't forget, we just got done with stall number 12, the Bachetti crowd. This is what's great, man. We've got people five, six, seven, ten deep somewhere. The stands are filled. The bricks are going up. 16 minutes and 40 seconds left there. Will, Sean, are you guys following some of these walls? I'm telling you, Stamper's got a monster over here. You got any big ones over on your end? I'm going to tell you something. I have a very impressive, impressive wall. From the wild card section, they call him the wild card because of the crowd he brings with him. <laughs> Mr. Grant Helms, that's not even the most impressive part about this. Mr. Grant Helms is probably a full-time Mason, probably a part-time model. Great-looking young kid, emphasis on young. These guys, if you laid them down on top of each other, cut them open, counted the rings, they're still younger than I am. So let's take a look how smooth he is as he lays. Just the top of it. It is getting really high. I want to take a quick moment, though, in... I came over and pulled one of our mudslingers aside, just had to get him a quick break here. Keep in mind, we could not get all this deck mix mortar pushed out here without the help of a couple of mudslingers. Bryce, this is your first year doing this. Uh, what, what's your experience? How are you feeling so far? These guys lay a lot of brick uh, really fast. I can say that. It's, it's hard keeping up with them. Well, we got the, the PA 4000s in the background using the multi clip. 20 cubic foot mixers is pushing out a lot of material. Are you guys able to keep up with it? No problem? With, uh, with a little bit of work, yeah, we're keeping up with them. That's awesome, Bryce. Appreciate you being here, volunteering for this, and uh, we're going to find out who that next winner is. So, TC, you got your ears on? Come on, we want to find that champion. Yeah, you know I do, and as a matter of fact, not just these guys, but the junior bricklayers as well that's going to be coming up right after these get done. Ian, Miles, Christian, and Cameron, you guys got to make your way over to the game day desk because we've got some junior bricklaying action going on. Now, right now, I'm going to bring in Darian Douthit. Darian, we talked to a little bit before. He is the four-time champion as a craftsman. Darian, I'm going to give you a uh, mic right here. And... Just do a little bit of a survey as you're looking through the walls. You know what a good wall looks like. So what do you say? Let's just walk a little bit backwards. When you see, when you're looking at the walls, what do you look for? It's kind of hard to tell. What do you think? Straight brick, uh, no voids, and these boys are putting up a lot of brick today. You know, I'm looking, brick. and there's I, I'm counting eight, nine, ten rows worth of brick. Yeah, and we have time left. And there's still time. We're looking at the clock. We still got 14 minutes. You think somebody's going to get 800 plus today? Yes, I do. And I think there may be a couple of them. Yeah, but I know with the 800, though, no deductions, that perfect wall. Now, when the, you won your last championship, do you remember your brick count? No, I don't. I, now, I think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of like 730, 740, if I'm not mistaken. But there were no mistakes on the wall whatsoever. It was perfect. Well... These boys are putting up some great walls today. I mean, great walls. Do you have so, any favorites, or are you just going to keep it kind of on the fence? I'm just going to keep it on the fence. I'll okay. pick it after we get done. I like it. That sounds good. Are we going to see you in the future, maybe building some more walls? I sure hope so. I love it. Well, Darian, thank you so much. Thank All you. right. Let's get to our crowd right now. Let's have some music, because these guys need to get fired up. 13 minutes left. 13 minutes remaining. Let's play some music. Come on.
No matter what you're building, get professional results from QuickCrete Fast Setting Concrete in the Red Bag. It sets hard in minutes. Find out more at QuickCrete.com. QuickCrete. For over 70 years, it's what America's made of. Out here is good, bad, and ugly. Out here, tools aren't just something you use. They're an extension of you. That's why Razorback tools make all the difference in the world. That's why they're the most trusted, the most reached for. More than 70 years of American manufacturing speaks louder than words. And the pros crafting our tools, they've got your back. Out here, only the strongest survive. Available from Razorback. All right, welcome back. I'm down here in stall number 13, lucky number 13, Mr. Scott Tuttle. We had got to do a check-in on him. Uh, I spoke with him and his brother earlier in the event, and I asked him a very specific question. Hey, you got a plan, you're going to stick to it, but what if it falls off? Are you got some backup plan that you might have to go to? So far, it looks like he's stuck to his strategy. He's got one of the highest walls out here. We talked about leads. We got less than 10 minutes to go, 9 minutes, 40 seconds. Look at him pound these out. Is he going to com compete? He had a target of 820 to 860 brick. He wants to take not only the championship, he wants that Craftsman RTV again, that Kubota RTV. Man, Tom, it is hot over here. We're watching a barn burner, buddy. Yeah, it's got about a uh, little over nine minutes remaining, nine minutes remaining uh, in the competition. Right behind me, I'm looking at stall number 19. Howard's rocking a really good wall over here. I'm getting down to stall number 20 uh, from Ontario. Ontario, sorry, our, our other Canadian team over here. This is a beautiful wall that these guys have going right here. Uh, I'm telling you, it's going to be hard for the judges this year to really pick a good wall because things are just flying. Will Scott, I know you're keeping an eye over there on JT Payne. He's got a big wall going as well. What does his look like? Oh, yeah, he does. Listen, we hate to say we didn't see it coming. We knew we were going to see some big walls, but our big surprise so far today is install number 10 with JC Payne. Let's hear it for it behind them because they're here supporting them. So they knew it before we knew it. This guy is an absolute machine. If you watch that Marshalltown trowel, cutting that mortar right off that brick, very rarely even touches the line. That's an unbelievably smooth hand that he's not bouncing that line all over the place. So, yes, today you are seeing an absolute master class. Tom? Hey, thanks, Will. I appreciate it. You know, I'm looking at his wall. Then I was looking over at Cole Stamper. And then my eyes caught, as you were talking to earlier, Grant Helms, model slash Mason, he's killing it as well. And what's going to be tough is the fact that there's probably not going to be a lot of point deductions. So as we're getting close, seven minutes remaining, I want to turn it to Sean O'Malley, who's going to give us some final strategies as these guys rock into the last few minutes where they have just got to reach deep. Well, Sean, what do you think the strategies are going to be? Hey, the strategies are all over the place, but the point is, are they sticking to their game plan? We see that we have only seven and a half minutes to go in this. I'll guarantee you, this is a critical part when the tenders are communicating with the Masons. Hey, you're at the seven minute mark. You need to jump to the front side of that wall and maximize the number of brick that you can get in there. You know they're going to start racking back so they don't have to go to those leads. All the brick in the middle, that's where the money is, and it's going to come down to these last five minutes. Tom, watch this in the last five minutes. This could be the game changer. One deduction on any wall can take them from champion to loser fast. You know, and it's kind of funny. We've been throwing out a few names here and there, and a little bit earlier I was over here with the Wisconsin crowd. A, a darn fine wall himself over here. And, no, there's not a, a, a generation. It doesn't go back a couple of generations. These first-time Masons are putting up a great wall. Let's hear it for the Wisconsin team. 
I don't know, might be the cheese curds getting in their way there. Uh, probably not as loud. But when you look at it, we're trying to count, and, and you're trying to count it up. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you know, working on 10 right there. That's what I was looking at. The same thing with JT Payne, Grant Helms, Cole Stamper, the Tuttles over there in stall 13. So there's a lot of close walls that you have to be careful. You got to look at them right now. So, all right, we're getting close. Uh, just a little bit under six minutes. We are approaching the five-minute mark. Uh, what do you say? We turn on some music. Let's let them finish up the competition with some good, hard music. Get that second breath. Take it home. Let's go. Come on. Tom, I'm over here in the JT Payne's stall, stall number 10. You were talking about him earlier. This is one of those areas where he's practicing that strategy. He's saving time by racking back. The way that you win this event is by pushing the envelopes and the rules. Now, they read these rules across every T and dot every I. He's maximizing the number of brick he's getting in there. He's got three and a half minutes to go. Make the music a little louder. Come on, let's bring these guys home. Three minutes, three minutes remaining. Tom, we're starting to see over here with only two and a half minutes to go that people are taking this time to actually square up their walls. They want to make sure that they are not getting any deductions. They're taking this extra time rather than putting it in the wall. They're making sure that they're plumb, they're square, they're level. They don't want to lose any brick counts on this one. Two minutes to go. Come on, guys, let's go. I don't hear anything from the crowd. If you don't get it excited, they're not going to have that. The energy comes from you guys in the crowd. Two minutes. Two minutes remaining. One forty-five, and as expected, the three-time champ has got a second win, and he is dropping brick. Eric Kent says, not on my watch. He's got his tender on him, telling him, come on, 
130 remaining. The tenders are talking and the hands are squawking. What have you got left? 70 seconds. With less than a minute to go, coming out of nowhere, stall number 22, Mario Hernandez. He placed last year. That wall looks good. 45 seconds. Leave nothing in the tank. Come on. 30 seconds remaining. If you're going to do something, do it now. With 15 seconds to go, our North Carolina Regional Champ, Riston McGee, making it happen. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, trials down. Yeah, I can't hear you. Come on, give it to these guys. What a competition, man. I'll tell you what, I've been doing this for 20 years and I have not seen this many incredible walls. We're gonna have some numbers, Sean, that we have not seen before, I promise you. All I can say, Tom, is I'm glad I'm not tearing this down. <laughs> wow, there's a lot of break out there for sure. All right, we got a 10 minute rest period for these guys. They're gonna tool for 20, we got 30 minutes where it's kind of like, okay, what do I do? I know that they're gonna be resting, but at the same time, you know they're gonna be talking. How do we make this happen? Now the yep. tender, he's not allowed to touch anything, but he can point stuff out to the right. mason to help he, him out. He really comes into play critical on this one. He can be the eyeball standing off of the wall a little bit. He can see some of those imperfections, some of the voids, and he can communicate that to the mason. Uh, they are taking that, that 10 minutes, then they're gonna get back in there. This is the only time during the event they're allowed to go around the back side of their wall, but they have to be careful because now they're working in someone else's house. Right. If they knock something over, boom, DQ. And you know, you have to be aware of the fact that those voids is the difference between driving home in a Ford truck and going to the bar later. Just one brick void over 20. That's it. That's gonna be 50 brick deduction. They're gonna be done. Yeah, the difference between first and third last year I think was about 20 brick, if I'm not mistaken. And the way you win this is zero deductions. Who is it gonna be? We got our judges already going in there doing the initial counts. Yeah. We're, we're capitalizing on this little break that they're taking, but our judges are hard at work. Speaking of taking a break, what do you say we talk to a couple of Masons right now? Let's get to a Mason and see you know, what they're thinking of. Do they have anything left in the tank? Because I'll tell you what, for 60 minutes, as much as they were working and as high as these walls are, you know they gotta be spent at this point in time because it's a nice day. It got a little bit hotter in the morning. It was cool, but they have definitely burned a lot out there. Hey, there is not a single Mason here that was gonna leave anything on the table. They're, they pushed it out. That's why we're in Las Vegas. They all want this title. All right, Let's Will, go talk to some. Yeah, Will Scott, who do you have with you right now? Which Mason? I tell you what, I'm standing back over here in stall number one. We've said the name a hundred times. You know why we said it. This is our world champion right now. Ah, before we get too excited, we know the judging portion is coming next. I'm going to pull out this microphone real quick. I've got to ask you, Cole, I saw you actually stop a little earlier than I've seen in other bricklayers. You took a lot of time to make sure that wall was square. So did you just feel good about the amount of brick you had, or was quality number one in your brain? Well, I had, I had the nine horses laying about ten minutes left. So So impressive for us in the crowd to watch because you knew about what time to pop the lines off and start laying freehand. Unbelievably impressive, right? I mean, a lot of the guys we saw out here, they left their lines on. That way every brick was nice and even and they knew it was. Somehow you just had enough artistry to go. Is that experience? How long you been bricklaying? 
<laughs> a little luck, he says, and a whole lot of experience. Thank you, Mr. Cole Stamper. Hey, um, I've got JT Payne over here, and uh, JT is in stall number 10. And uh, JT, we're watching the wall go up, and you know it, it rivals any of the other walls over there. How do you feel right now? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Yeah, what kind of communication goes on with you and your tender? What do you guys talk about? Uh, we talk about the consistency of the mud, how high to stack the brick, um, just things like that. He keeps me in check on our time, you know, so I kind of know where I'm at. Uh -huh. yeah. And now, how much did you practice throughout the year? Because you had to, you had to practice a little bit. To, to make the wall look this good. We could build several houses with the brick we threw away to practice for this. <laughs> I, heard, I heard Mark back here. He's like, every Sunday. That's right, every so, Sunday. Yeah, but church first, right? Yeah. Church and then you build it. Church and practice every Sunday. That's what we do. There you go. I like it. Well, I'm going to let you take a break and relax. I'm going to throw it over to Sean O'Malley right now. But good luck in the next phase, tool in the wall. Sean, who do you have? I'm over here in stall number 14 with Riston McGee. We know the McGee name. I tell you, you look pretty tired. Do you feel comfortable in what you, have, what you put forward here today? Yeah, I think we did pretty good. It's come down to the judging. Well, during this little 10-minute intermission, um, you're catching your breath, and you're going to go back in there, working and striking a lot of brick here. Are you going to have enough time to actually get everything struck? Probably not be able to join out both sides, but as long as you don't have any holes. Okay, so you're not really going after the craftsmanship. It sounds like you're after the big count. That's right. Okay. So, um, it is worth noting here, TC, that Riston laid 741 brick in the regional qualifier in North Carolina. That is the most in the entire country. But you know what? You know who's a close third? That young gentleman down in stall number 24? Mr. Helm, North Carolina. They're really bringing it this year, that's for sure. Now they're going to finish up their little break. Let's check in on one other team here. Here, Will, you got someone else you want to check in with? I don't. All I am doing is getting all pumped up about the next phase of this competition, the tooling period. Sean, have you told these guys anything about tooling yet? We have, we have not talked about it at all. Why don't you go and mention a couple of points? What are they trying to achieve here? I tell you what, we'll just go ahead and roll into stall number three right here. What they're wanting to do is they're gonna take a joiner, it's concaved, and it's a piece of metal, and they're gonna strike this joint across. Now that joiner is about 3 eighths of an inch, so if you'll watch my finger, it's making a nice concave joint, sealing the mortar to the brick, and making a picture-perfect project for any architect, any owner, any homeowner that wants a pretty project. So that's what they're trying to accomplish. Will, what, are the, what tools are they allowed to use Come during on. this part? We've seen everything from your normal S-joiners all the way Come to on. the sled runners. So you're talking about something only about six Talk inches all the way down to almost a foot. It's so quite a bit of variety you'll see. And we, we know that those people that are really chasing yep. that craftsmanship okay. award, they are going to really concentrate on this tooling because they want to make that wall look as beautiful as possible. It's probably a good as time of any to go ahead and say it. Craftsmanship is what keeps our industry growing, right? It's what uh, that art form, that... Uh, just something you don't get to see when you build with wood and you build with metal. It's guys that put together beautiful projects like this, the craftsmanship, that mean everything to us. Well, l let's remember something really important. Our champion that wins here today and goes home in that Ford F-250 could also be the winner of that Kubota RTV. It has happened before. Is it going to happen this year? It's I can't wait to find out. 2014. Sheesh, Sean. 2014. Maybe today is the day. It might be. Fred Campbell Stall. I'm with his tender, Javier Molina. And um, Javier's family could not be here. They are in Mexico right now. And Javier, do uh, you want to say hola to uh, familia? Si? Sí. Si. Sí. Sí. Quiero mandar un saludo a toda mi familia en Cedral San Luis, San Luis Potosí, México. A mi familia que está en Johnson City, Tennessee. Y a todos mis amigos que trabajan en, en lo mismo que nosotros en Johnson City, Tennessee. Saludos a mi hermano Rodolfo hasta México. I know his family is rooting for him right now. Uh, mucho trabajo. See? Sí. 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 He's been working really, really hard. So, Javier, good luck. I'm glad we could say hello to your family in Mexico. I know you and Fred have been working together, so good luck today. Gracias. All right. Uh, we are going to take it to commercial break right now. When we come back, we'll be done with our rest period and ready to start tooling the wall. Let's take a short break. 
the SpecMix D2W Workhorse Continuous Mixing System, the mobile mixing station that increases your efficiency by allowing you to mix where you work. Okay. The compact, lightweight design of the workhorse makes it the go-to system for any residential or commercial project. Its mobility makes it ideal for job sites with space limitations, rough terrain, and sprawling projects that put your workforce on the move. And for high-rise construction, as the building goes vertical, the workhorse easily moves floor to floor with your crew. Mortar, core fill grout, stucco, and concrete. The D2W workhorse is engineered to thoroughly mix materials to meet specification with minimal setup and labor. It's the low dust, zero waste system that continuously produces a high quality mix. Running on standard 120 volt power, simply plug the workhorse into an outlet connected to a water source or pump from a tank. Then flip the switch, dial in the desired water ratio and start breaking 80 pound bags of spec mix into the hopper. The workhorse will crank out over a yard of material in one hour. With the addition of a HEPA vacuum and the SpecMix D2W workhorse dust collection system, nuisance dust is a problem of the past. When mixing in confined areas where dust is a problem, the SpecMix D2W workhorse dust collection system is your perfect job site solution. Working indoor and outdoor, floor to floor, large projects or small, the D2W workhorse is the system for high productivity and profitability. To learn more about the SpecMix D2W workhorse or other SpecMix products and silo solutions, visit specmix.com. As we come back from commercial break, we got 30 seconds left on the clock. Uh, these guys that are behind me, I'm going to introduce them in just a second. Uh, what we're going to do is, when the clock rhymes down, we got 20 seconds left in the rest period. 20 minutes is going to be put on the clock. 20 minutes, they're allowed to take care of the walls. That's the mason only, not the tender. They're going to tool it. After that, the judges get in there, and then uh, we're going to turn these guys loose right here on the walls. I'm going to introduce them and tell them what's at stake. So we got three. Two, one, you guys go. We got 20 minutes on the wall. You guys tool the wall. So I'm going to move over here and I want to introduce you to, first of all, from Washington State, BAC Workers number one, Ian Works. Ian, how you doing? I'm doing pretty well. Okay, you, you feel confident today? I do. Okay, feel now, feel now you're a junior bricklayer, but what do you think about what you saw out there today with those masons and tenders? It's a pretty big undertaking. The numbers they're putting in is pretty amazing. Now, you guys are going to have five minutes here to do it. How many brick do you think you might be laying today? About 170. 170? Oh, how much time? Yeah, yeah. How, uh, five minutes. Oh, five yeah, minutes. Five minutes? Yeah. Uh, I can lay probably 80. About 80 brick? Yeah. Uh, that's pretty good. Next up from Illinois, Miles Afri. Let's get, we're going to pass the mic down there. Miles Afriye, did I get that right? Yeah, Miles Afriye, yeah. Uh, I like it, man. From BAC District Council Training Center. What do you think about those guys throwing it down out there? Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely incredible. Like, like one of those guys said, that's like a, a day's worth of work, you know? They did it in, in an hour. It's, it's incredible, you know? Okay, now, have you been practicing for this event? Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, whenever I'm not working, laying brick, you know, trying to practice, trying to get my craft up. I like it. What do you think? What do you think you're going to throw down here today? Uh, 60, 70, 80, you think you're going to make it? 100. 100? <laughs> yeah. I like it. Game on. All right, let's pass the mic down from North Carolina. Christian Klutz, Huntley Brothers. I know if you're working with the Huntley Brothers, they got you working hard because that name is synonymous with the Bricklayer 500. How did you feel about today's event? It was cool. Yeah? It was cool. Yeah. yeah. Now, now, if you're working with the Huntley Brothers, are one of them teaching you personally? Um, no, nah, it's mainly just experience on the job. Okay. And what do you think? What, what kind of a number are you going to put out there today? As many as I can. As ma that's, I, I like that as well. Let's pass it down here. Our final contestant from Pennsylvania, Cameron Wolf with the Williamson College of the Trades. Now, you're obviously working with Pete Zwolek, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, Pete, I know he's a good teacher. He's going to be part of our podcast a little bit later on. What sort of values and stuff are Pete talking about when he's teaching you guys? So he's trying to teach us to be, like, the best kind of a person that we can be. Um, whether it's from working, laying brick, laying block, or in the office management uh, position, he's just trying to teach us to be the best that we can. Okay, well, sounds good. What do you think for your number today? What do you think you got in your pocket? I'm going to lay until I can't. I like that. That's pretty good. All right, well, I'm going to grab the microphone. Gentlemen, I just want to let you know we're going to come to you in just a couple seconds. You can get with your tenders to see how that works. $500 on the line for the winner. Anybody need any money? 
Only one guy raised his hand. I don't know about there. All right, 500 on there. I'm going to throw it back over to Sean O'Malley. Sean, who have you got over there? What's going on? Thank you, Tom. Good luck on that Junior Bricklayer event. I can't wait to see the results. I actually tried to find a judge, but they are all way too busy right now. So I'm going to walk you through, actually, what our judges are doing out there. We've got a, each wall has its own judge. And what they are looking for, the number of voids, the number of brick orientation. That, some people call that the shiner. If someone puts a brick in the wall backwards, chip brick. They're only allowed a small tolerance, about the size of a dime. A lipped brick, anything over a quarter of an inch extending from the surface is going to be a deduction. Bed joints and head joints. I tell you, these bed joints are critical. We saw how much spec mix mortar went out there. That's a lot of bed joints. Thousands of linear feet of bed joints, and they have a tolerance between a quarter of an inch and five eighths. That's not very much, and in my opinion, that's one of the most difficult criteria that's out there. We're also looking at those head joints and tipped brick. Sometimes they call those motorboats. As these guys were working towards the end of the day, their arms are tired, they're sagging. If they put too much pressure in the heel, they could get a speedboat. It's going to be a deduction. As we talked about, Tom, one deduction can be the difference between winning and losing. Tom, if you've yeah. got a few minutes here. Yeah, you know, Sean, um, checking the clock. Let's see if we got 15, uh, just a little bit under 16 minutes right there as we do that. I just got done talking uh, with the junior bricklayers. Now, once we do the junior bricklayers, over here to my right, underneath the spec mix area, we had the beat the bricklayer competition as well. So 500 on the line for the juniors, 500 on the line for the beat the bricklayers. And then we're going to do something that we've never done before. And once all the tooling and everything is done and we turn the judges loose, we're going to have six amazing people gather together around the whiskey barrels that are over there. And our podcast will start called Trowel Talk. And the topic of the conversation is, what is it going to take to get a trowel in the hands of the youth of America today, working forward, keeping masonry strong, keeping the trade strong, and, you know, getting these masons out there, you know, boys, girls, you know, everything is on the table and on the line trying to move forward. We talked with the MCAA a little bit earlier. So we're going to have um, a little bit of trial talk, as they say, and uh, get some comments from some of the industry professionals and see, you know, what they're talking about. So right now, what do you say we get the cameras on the guys tooling the walls? We'll get a little up close and personal so you can see exactly what's going on and how they do that. We'll play some music. We'll keep you abreast of the time. And then when we come back, we got the junior bricklayer that's going to be taking place. And then after that, beat the bricklayer. So let's get the cameras on the walls tooling and let's get some music going right now. I'm over here in stall number one, full standards. Now, he's in the, the tooling part. 
And look at how primitive he's going. He's picking up that spec mix mortar with just his gloves, and he's using his S joiner to fill in it as many as possible. He's got a lot of brick in there. You see, he's hitting all of those head joints first, and then he's going to come back and start hitting those bed joints. It's all routine. He, it's persistence. He's going to get after it. We're going to let him concentrate here, but we need to keep an eye on this stall number one as a possible winner here. Over the past 134 years, Stabila has learned a valuable lesson. Create tools that can tell their own story. All right, we got about uh, just a touch under 11 minutes to go before we turn the judges loose. And uh, the Masons are working feverishly trying to fill all those voids. And you can see the sled tool that they're using to make all those joints look absolutely perfect. And uh, this is the time, as we were talking about uh, earlier, where the Mason and the Tender, they can talk with each other, point things out, not allowed to touch the wall. But they do work in, uh, in sync to try and do the best that they can. Now, the kids have been done for a little while, but I want to throw it over to Ryan Shaver. Uh, there were 42 different students that were in there, the first, second, and third year apprentices. Uh, we're going to lead off our award ceremony with them, uh, 750, 500, and 250 for the kids. Uh, that's going to be for each of the divisions, first, second, and third year. And Ryan, um, you know, we have done so much with you over the years, and uh, it's always great to be with you in North Carolina when you have like five, 600 students come in and actually watch the process of qualifying for the regional and getting these kids interested. And, you know, there's a junior bricklayer competition going on there as well. So what are you seeing for the first, second, and third year products? And just talk a little bit about that, if you would. Ryan? Tom, we're over here, and the contest is through. This is the first year I can remember that we had 100% of the participants complete their project. It looks phenomenal. Midway through, when I gave my report about how these walls looked, and I thought it was the best-looking walls we had had in a long time, now the evidence is in. Um, these are the best-looking walls. First year, second year, and third year, every contestant completed. It is just phenomenal. So it shows you how the youth of our industry is really progressing in the and that's what excites me. I, I started out as a youth doing the same thing that these guys are doing, and it, it just jump starts your career, gets you super excited to go into the field of masonry, and also the positivity that it shows that every apprentice actually finished today is just truly exciting. So that's my final report over here, and I am jacked up for our youth. Unbelievable. Back to you, Tom. Hey, Sean, one more thing. I don't want to let you go just yet. Um, because when you have those kids in North Carolina and they're actually watching the regional competition, they're watching the junior bricklayer competition, when everything is said and done, do they pull you aside and go, man, I, I, I really like this. How, how do I get involved? You know, how are those programs working in North Carolina and how do we spread the word? So in North Carolina, we're extremely blessed. We have, in the high schools, we have 101 masonry training programs statewide. So it's phenomenal to get our youth involved at the high school level. Then when they graduate high school, they can move into our apprenticeship program, which is three years or 6,000 hours. So the students are really progressing quickly through the apprenticeship because they get so much training at the high school level. So that's what accelerates them as an apprentice and gets them to the skill set and the level that they are when they reach a national competition. So we have two regionals in North Carolina. 
Um, each one of those regionals, you have to win that to come to Vegas, and that's our qualifier. So it's been extremely positive. We've enjoyed it so much, and I'm just, like I said, after what I see today, I'm excited for the youth and apprenticeship all across the country. All right, thanks, Ryan. I appreciate it very much. Uh, Jim Patches, I'm going to make uh, Jim come over here. Jim, if you would, because we've got the Beat the Bricklayer competition coming up in just a second. I'm going to give you a microphone right there, Jim, and we'll, we'll have a camera find us in just a second. Now, we did this all day, and I know that there were... Um, Come on over here. We're going to turn around. Yeah. We're going to get in the camera over here. Right. And there were a lot of people on the board over there that was going on. Sean, I believe you did some updates with Jim as well. You know, what, what kind of competition do we have going on over here? Well, these are the top two finalists that we had over the last two days, Tom. So we've got Logan over here, Logan Lane from Greenville, Tennessee. He laid 52 brick. We've got Juan Cabra. He laid 53 bricks. It was a very tight competition throughout the day. Over 50 brick in how long? Five minutes, Sean. Wow. So, I mean, you multiply that times 12 right there, which would be an hour. That's pretty darn good. Those guys are talking six, 700 brick if they get flying and flowing for something like that. So we've got some pretty good little masons over here. And, you know, they're no stranger to it. And now they're out on the big stage. So now they're going to compete for $500. We're going to see who's going to be the best beat the brick layer for 2023. And I hope this encourages them to actually get to their local regional, get qualified, win that local regional, get out here on the big stage for the Specmex Brick Layer 500. Absolutely. There's a lot of good, interesting information with these guys. So, they both come from different backgrounds. No, who gave you that money? What? Who gave you that? I wanted the tables You're last not night. So, of course I am. I got room for a cup of coffee. So we got five crisp $100 bills, not only here for the Beat the Brick Layer, but he was just looking, look, he was looking over, he was like, yeah, I won't be taking that home. Those eyes lit up on the five spot right here. And of course, the, the young men over there, uh, same thing, we got 500 for both right there. Well, we've got some interesting information here with regards to Logan. Logan's 20 years old. He's been about 15 for about, uh, since he's been about 15, but he's been trained by Fred Campbell, the three-time uh, Bricklayer 500 world champion. You know uh, what, it all comes together. You know, Fred, Fred Campbell, he's a to attend down in his area, and he also, Logan also attends that class as well on Thursday evenings. It could be a big payoff, but this guy is no stranger as well. Oh, there, there, there's no doubt. Juan, he's been doing this for about 20 years. Yeah. He got started, believe it or not, by his mom. His mom laid brick at Mexico. No. That is, that is fantastic. I want to give everybody an update over on the Spec Mix Brick Layer 500. we got five minutes left of tooling. Just five minutes to go. All right, Jim, we're going to let you talk and go over the rules with everybody. Okay. we got the five spots sitting right here. You get them ready. We're going to do both of these in just a second. But we're going to let, let, wait a minute. What are you that? That? Just in case. We can't trust him. Yeah, I know. All right, let's wrap it up with some music. Let's get the cameras over there on the tooling. We'll get all that taken care of. And once all the trowels are down and all the tools are down, we're going to come back here, do the beat the brick layer and the junior brick layer. A little music, a little oh, camera nice. action over on the walls. is a privately owned Canadian company that specializes in the design, manufacturing, and distribution of mast climbing work platforms for the construction industry. Our engineering team continuously improves our line of products and quality levels, helping Hydromobile stay ahead of the competition and remain the industry leader.
Got about two minutes left, two minutes. One minute remaining, one minute for tooling, that's it. Forty five seconds, forty five seconds, and then all cools down. Ten seconds, ten seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All tools down. Let's give our teams another hand. It's now up to the judges. The judges are now going to take over. We're going to let them get started. Give the Masons and Already introduced to Rick Layer and the big walk away with five dollars. Finding our treatment. Young men are going to actually go through and start laying as many brick as possible in a short five minute window. Then the break, and then we're going to go back at it and tool one side of the wall for three minutes. So just over 10 minutes all together, and we got $500 on the line. Once they're all done, we're going to be looking at the total count the plumb, the height, the joint thickness, and making sure that everything is within a quarter inch tolerance of level. So $500 on the line here. We've got Ian Works from Washington. He at the BAC workers number one. Miles back there in the far corner. He is with District Council Training Center. Christian Klutz, North Carolina with Huntley Brothers Construction. And Cameron Wolf, part of the uh, PA Williamson College for the Trades program. Now, I'm excited. Everyone, can I get your trowels up? Oh, before we get there, we got to get some spec mix mortar out on these boards. These young lads are ready to go as soon as we have that spec mix mortar. Tom, we're just going to take a quick, short break, T check in over with the judges, make sure everything's going smooth there. We're going to kick off this junior competition in about three minutes. I like it. Let's do it.
hear that? That's the sound of quality from Marshalltown. For over 130 years, Marshalltown has forged a brand known for quality, craftsmanship, and a commitment to masonry professionals like you. From start to finish, Marshalltown produces tough, well-designed tools that perform beyond industry standards. Plus, every tool comes with top-notch customer success support and exclusive benefits through Team Marshalltown. We're proud of our history and proud to support the Bricklayer 500 and professionals like you. So good luck from Marshalltown, where quality still matters. back at the spec mix bricklayer 500 masonry madness continues and we're over here at the spec mix junior bricklayer we got four young apprentices that are actually about ready to take off here again real fast they're going to take five minutes to put in as many brick as they can a two minute rest and then three minutes to tool five hundred dollars on the line and i've got it burning a hole in my pocket can i get trowels up from all of the masons trowels up show me that you're ready guys let's go trowels up if you're ready all right and count it down in three, two, one. Let's lay some brick, please.
got one minute to go in the Spec Mix Junior Bricklayer 500. Final 60 seconds. Get the brick in the wall. Can I get the audience to help me out and count this down? It's five, four, three, two, one. Trowels down. Wow, we had some great action there. The Spec Mix Junior Bricklayer 500 is now complete. But we're not done with Masonry Madness yet. TC, you got some fun stuff going on over there? Yeah, Beat while the you blitz guys blitz. are over there resting and tooling for five <laughs> minutes, I figure, why not Patches and I just do a little beat the bricklayer? Because I got five bills in my pocket as well. We got Juan and Logan, right, Jim? All right, let's put five minutes back up on the clock, if you would. Let's do that. Jim, I'm going to let you call it. I've been calling stuff all day. He'll count it down from five to one and beat the bricklayer. Jim, it's on you, my friend. Two, one, let's lay some brick. All right, beat the bricklayer. That mud is flying already, they just started. We've even got that masonry girl over there doing a little action on the camera as well. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think? What's going to be our uh, our prediction here? You think it's going to be at least somewhere near 50 brick? I, I think it's going to be 50 or better to make the competition, to make the finals here, to win it, and it could be anybody's race. I mean, these guys were 52 and 53 in the in the prelims, so it's and, anybody's race. Yeah, it's, it's not sloppy. I mean, you've got to have a decent looking wall. If it looks rough, we're going to go. No, that ain't going to work. We're going to look at shiners. We're going to look at voids. You know, we're not going to be too critical, but you know, we're going to make those calls. Okay, sounds good. Logan and Juan, good luck. And when our five minutes, when that winds down, that means that Sean's junior bricklayers will be done with their tooling okay. and with their rest period. And then when all that is done, obviously we're going to start ours. And then, Jim, I think you know that over in your area where the whiskey barrels are, we've got ourselves our first ever podcast, Trout Talk. We're going to have six industry professionals talking about the future of masonry. So it's gonna be something folks don't wanna miss. Oh, that's outstanding. Looking forward to seeing that. Just wanna let these guys know you're a minute and 15 in, guys. A minute and 15 in. All right, let's turn the music up a little bit. Let's let them lay some brick, and we'll let you know when we have a minute left on the clock. Go! Well, Tom, while you're over there resting, we're gonna get back to work over here at the Specmates Junior Bricklayer 500. We're gonna take our own three minutes to tool up these walls, work inside only. Let the time begin now. Three minutes.
So, so are you both rooting for for Logan? I hear you over here. Logan, faster, Logan! That's your husband. Well, I just know from personal experience that even if he doesn't win, he told me personally, you're still getting five hundred dollars and the house and the car. Ladies and gentlemen, can I get your assistance? Let's count this down from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's it. Tools down. All right. We are going to tally these up. We're going to find out who won the Spec Mix Bricklayer 500 Junior Competition. We'll be right back with you with the winner. We got five C notes in my pocket. Juan and Farm Boy, they are officially done. I heard that was Logan's nickname, Jim. So, so come on, he's got it. It's on now. Come on over here. We'll get it. We got the judging. We got, uh, let's put Jim's mic on over here. We're going to count them up total and see what's going on. Sean, while he's judging, I know you're going to be giving away some money over there. So I'm going to let you count the brick. Jim, don't say who our winner is yet. Sean, you got the first 500 to dish out. That's right. Maybe I'll just walk out with it myself and not hand it to these young lads. Shaver over there doing a little judging with you? That's right, we got the best in, in the business doing our judging on the Brickler 500. Now we got our, our tally coming out here in just a moment, so sit tight, it's coming in in 30 seconds. All right, while you guys are doing that, I just want to let everybody know, once we get done handing both of these out, we're going to be making our way with the camera crew over to the Building Masonry Pride Spec Mix area for our very first podcast it's going to be called trial talk and we have six industry professionals that are going to be with us uh, and we're going to be talking about the future of masonry and how to get trials in the hands of youngsters and you know jim i know that's something important and something that uh, that you're all about as well so it's nice to see the juniors nice to see a young guy like logan out here out here working hard and um farm boy right that's a i don't know how do you get that how do you get that nickname I don't know. He looks like Luke Combs to me. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and Juan over here, he put up a good wall. He was working hard over there. He's breathing hard, so we'll see. I don't know who the winner is. Jim has hidden the winner. Sean, do you have any results yet, and are you ready to give away $500? Yeah, I'm always ready to give away $500. We do have a winner. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Christian Klutz. He's our winner for the day. He laid 61 perfect brick today. Hey, congratulations. You think you can find a spot to spend this? Hey, you did a great job here. I mean, uh, it, does this make you excited to come back and try to get in the big show one day? Yeah, I would like to, but that take a lot of practice. It, well, you're, you're well on your way. You laid some great brick here today. You got $500. Maybe spend that at Marshalltown. Get yourself some new tools, tool bags. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Tom, we had a great event here. It's all about workforce development and finding the next Masons, the next generation. Appreciate you. Congratulations, Thank Christian. You. 61 brick. That's impressive. Jim Patches over here was saying that. He's like, 61. It's pretty good. And Jim, we got That's a number, number close to that, don't we? We're, we're, we're real Being close to that. And uh, we've got our winner here who has done a great job. His overhand side of the wall is probably one of the best I've seen. Even though he said he was nervous when he came out here, he laid 58 brick and installed two. Juan Cabral wins the, wins the $500. Come Congratulations, on over here, Juan. Let's Juan. give him a nice Way hand. Way to go, Juan.
Those awesome, are real, buddy. by the way, awesome. just so you nice know. Job. Congratulations, Juan. Nicely done, man. Nicely Great done. Job, Hang on, I'm going to steal your mic right here. Now, now I mean, do you, are you a regular Mason contractor? No. No? You just yeah. came out here just for fun, just to win the money? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like it. He's like, yeah, I'm just good. I'm good. I'm good with the five beans. All right. Congratulations to you, Juan. Congratulations to Christian. Logan, you got to deal with your wife. She's over there. She's like, uh, okay. Is, is he okay, though? Is he still all right? She, Logan, farm boy, you got the thumbs up from your wife. She said, good effort. All Great right. job, guys. We're going to take a short break right now. We are going to go to commercial, and then when we come back, we're going to have our podcast set up, and we'll meet you over in the Spec Mix area. We'll be right back. No matter the size of your fleet, a mom and pop with a couple of vehicles, or a big box shop with thousands of them, Ford Pro Telematics can help increase your productivity by providing real-time updates like vehicle health and live GPS tracking. Introducing a productivity accelerator for your business, Ford Pro. smarter that's built to deliver more comfort more productivity more get it done right that's built around a durable Kubota engine you can depend on with versatile skid steers and track loaders powerful wheel loaders and reliable compact excavators the Kubota construction lineup shows up ready to work every day visit us at booth number c6560 Kubota is a proud sponsor of the spec mix bricklayer 500 over the past 134 years Stabila has learned a valuable lesson. Create tools that can tell their own story. Mix Bricklayer 500. If you've, if you've noticed, there's, our judges are out at the main event and they're looking at all the different criteria that we had mentioned earlier. The chip brick, the lip brick, um, the, the heights, the plumb. There's about eight or nine different criteria. Go into your Spec Mix Bricklayer 500 magazine. You've got all the criteria right there. But we can't do this by ourselves. We have the industry's best. We have groups from all over, the educators of masonry out there judging these walls right now. And we want to give a quick shout out to all of those judges. Stan Kulaskik from the District Council Training Center, Eddie Van Wy from the Music City Mason Contractors, Joe Plunkett from Bricks and I'm sorry, from Bricks and Stone, Sean McLean from Lane Masonry, Michael Coys from BAC Local Number Two, Dave Adams from the BAC Dr District Council Training Center, Randy Fell from Marriott Construction Corporation, Luke Kildering from Lang Masonry, Andrew Besaw from Oscar J. Bolt Construction, Chad Huntley from Huntley Brothers, Johnny Langergrep from Langergrep Masonry, Rob Turner, Rob Turner Masonry, Esperdo Valdez from the BAC District Council Training Center, 
Lupez Marquis from D. Brown Masonry, Brandy George from Music City Mason Contractors, James Swanson from Rob Turner Masonry, Renee Latotwa, Renee Latotwa, sorry for butchering that, Ken Sirak from Marriott Construction, Trevor Cooper from BAC Local Number no. 2 Toronto, Victor Fernandes from Fernandes Masonry, Samuel Solano from Solano Masonry, Adam Gibson from BAC Local Number no. 5. Those are our judges that are out there going through each one of those criteria. We have to make sure that we're crossing the T's, dotting the I's. And I want you to notice that all these amazing prizes that are out here today, it's not possible without all these great sponsors. And they've been so gracious over the years. And we want to thank each and every one of them for doing that. We want to bring them up on stage so you can see them, if you want to talk to them, and just let them know we are so appreciative all that they do year in and year out. So as we call their names, please give them a nice round of applause. Sean, are you ready? I'm ready to do this. Let's bring up the big boys. Here we go. From Hydromobile, Mr. Kevin O'Shea. Kevin, come on up, man. Let's give him a nice hand. You know, without Hydromobile, it doesn't hold that, uh, hold that beautiful Ford truck. No, nope, there's, there's a lot of weight up there that uh, Hydro is actually doing a great job. From Ford, Mr. Nick Burner. Come on up here. Nick Banger, come on Nick up, Banger. man. Nick Banger, sorry. Handed the keys last year. He's ready. You got the keys on you, Nick? Are you ready? He's good? Okay. Yeah, I like that. From Marshalltown. Where is she? Kim Haley. Kim, come on up. Marshalltown. There she is. Representing Quickcrete, Mr. Dale Nels. Dale, come on up, buddy. With Best Block, they did the fastest trail on the block this year. He flipped a coin, a little tired, but he's still got a little bit left in him. Justin Meyer, Justin, come on up, man. Where'd he go? Where's Joe? Oh, there he is. Come on, you better run now. You're going to burn some calories. Come on, Forrest. Uh huh. <laughs> well, you know what? I get the honor of introducing this next one, and he is the coolest cat in masonry. No, no, just jump up on the stage. You don't get to use the stairs. <laughs> From Multi Quip, Mr. Raleigh Cox. Come on up here, Raleigh. Look at this handsome man. Is it just me, or does he belong on Yellowstone? <laughs> <laughs> From Steel, Mr. John Allen. Come on up. By the way, that guy hanging out over there by the Steel trailer did carve that beautiful, beautiful logo that the winner is going to get to put in the back of their truck. And it's even signed on the back, autographed. And that's awesome. Mm -hmm. From IQ, Mr. Paul Gooth. Paul, Paul, come on, come up, on man. up, Check out the new IQ 1550, because it's not your grandfather's saw, Paul. I love that line. That's awesome. From H&B, Holman and Bernard, Linda Potter. Linda, come on up. Great job, by the way, on the demos there. So that's, that's awesome. One of our favorite partners from Kubota, Jacob Mendoza. Come on Jacob. up, Jacob. Jacob gets to hand away some keys today, too. Yes, he does for our best wall, the best craftsman out there. All right, from Razorback, the shortest guy in the crowd, Ben Stout. Ben, come on up. Just to let you know, I've already drafted Ben in my three-on-three -three basketball team. <laughs> Y'all are hosed, just to let you know. By the way, Ben, I got you at guard. I'll be playing center. Okay, good. Just checking. Go ahead. Up next from Belden, we have Eric Zellis. Come Eric, on come up on here, up, Eric. Now, unfortunately, we're not able to have Brian Belden here, but our thoughts are with him right now. But Eric's going to be accepting here. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, get your picture in front of the wall. The brand new laser etching and coating that they have on there is absolutely amazing. And from Stabila, Eric Vela. Eric, come on up, buddy. Stabila is always rocking it out. They really are. Sean, let's you and I step aside right now. 
We're going to have a nice hand. We're going to take a group picture of all our amazing sponsors. Let's have a nice hand for the team that helps us put it all together. Thanks, guys and girls. All right, Brian Carney has got all the checks. We're just waiting for the official paperwork from the judges. It is all done. We're just waiting for the physical paper, and then we're going to be good to go. Should we, should we talk about what, what's at stake here today? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, there's a lot going on, and I think what they can do right now is up on the big board, if you would put up that screen with all the prizes, we can go over that. That would be the best thing to do. If everybody takes a look at the Jumbotron, you can see what actually we have at stake right there. Third place prizes, there they are, $3,000, the Marshalltown loaded tool bag and 10 back of Gatorback mortar boards. The level from Stabila, a $700 product certificate from Steel. IQ power tools, block lotter, $500 gift certificate, and the Razorback set of 10 tools. Now that's third place. Moving up to second, the check gets increased to $4,000, and then you're also going to get the steel TSA 230 cut quit battery power out, powered cutoff machine and accessories. You're also going to get a 24 inch Stabila level with the etch plate, second place pack, and also the Gatorback mortar boards, and also the Marshalltown loaded tool bag. Next up, We've got our top Craftsman prizes, and of course the Kubota RTV X1140. Jacob Mendoza is going to be handing the keys to the winner of that, and that's going to be the best wall. It's a minimum of 500 brick that you have to do to qualify, but it is the best, most sellable wall. $5,000 plus the Kubota RTV X1140 and all those amazing prizes, the ceremonial trial trophy from Marshalltown, the Stabila level, you get a belt and a plaque. The Hilti, 4A22 cordless drill driver. Also, the 4A22 impact driver. The steel power, battery-powered cutoff machine. A $1,000 block lotter product certificate. The IQ power tools. The cyclonic dust extractor with HEPA filtration. And Razorback, the tools. And two Razorback bar stools as well. And then, of course, you knock it up to the top. Yep, our world champion, a check for $5,000, the Multiquip Essex Pro 12 mortar mixer, the Marshalltown trowel trophy loaded tool bag with Gatorback mortar boards, the world champion belt and plaque, and the 24 inch engraved level, the cordless drill driver and impact driver and tool bag from the fine folks at Hilti, Steel has got that TSA 230 cut quick battery powered cutoff machine, block lotter, a $1,000 product certificate, also, you get the IQ power tools, the dry cut saw, Razorback, the set of 10 bar stools, and two Razorback bar stools. That's pretty, that's bar tools, not bar stools. It's the Razorback bar stools, two of them. And then, of course, from Ford, the Ford F 250 XLT Super Duty 4x4. So, those are going to be all your prizes. Sean? Well, what about toughest tender? The toughest tender is also going to be a nice check for 25 hundred 
dollars. I, I think that's the next prize that we're going to be giving out, isn't it? I think that's what we're going to start and with We're right almost there. there. Yeah, we're going to start there with the toughest tender and then work our way from the bottom up to the top. And then Nick Banger with Ford, he's going to come back out again and he's going to give us all the keys. He's, he's going to give us the keys. The key fob, ready to go. So we'll do that. So I'm just waiting for the paper in my hands. Brian Carney, who is the vice president of Spec Mix, he has got uh, all the official checks. There he is right there. Thank you, Brian. Brian, who acted as our floor director today, we do appreciate that. All the results are in. They're just writing everything down on paper right now. So we've got, uh, what do we got? 30? 30 seconds, maybe? No, not 30 seconds, maybe a minute. You can't hear me? Your, your voice is go, going away from you there. I don't know. Do we have to get a little bit closer over here? So... All right, we're just waiting for that. What do you say? We'll, we'll do another quick commercial. This has happened in the past. We do this before. We think we're ready to go, and then we need 30 more seconds. Well, you know how it goes, Tom. We, we, there's so much on the line now. You can't just randomly hand out checks. There's a lot of money at stake here. The judges want to make sure that they have all of their T's crossed and the I's dotted before we come up here and introduce something that we shouldn't. So we do want to give them just a couple more minutes. Maybe we do spin up a quick commercial from one of our great sponsors from the Masonry Madness Day, and uh, we'll come back and give away some prizes. I like it, we'll be right back, here we go. And we'll get the mic. What can I do to make my business more productive? Every successful business owner will not only ask themselves this question, but will create a business plan based on it. At Ford Pro, we're purposely built to help turn these plans into reality. So forget about cobbling together charging from here and telematics from there. We offer a more one-stop shop approach where you'll find ways to manage your fleet and bundle your billing. So if you're asking us, what will my business look like tomorrow? We think it's going to look pretty freaking amazing. Introducing a productivity accelerator for your business, Ford Pro. Over the past 134 years, Stabila has learned a valuable lesson. Create tools that can tell their own story. so you can work smarter. That's built to deliver more comfort, more productivity, more get it done right. That's built around a durable Kubota engine you can depend on. With versatile skid steers and track loaders, powerful wheel loaders and reliable compact excavators, the Kubota construction lineup shows up ready to work every day. Visit us at booth number C6560. Kubota is a proud sponsor of the Spec Mix Bricklayer 500.
All right, we got what we wanted. We are good to go. And as we start reeling off the prizes, they're doing some last minute adjustments. They needed 60 seconds for the final prize, but we're gonna get started because it's gonna take us a couple minutes to get everybody up here and for the prizes themselves. Very true. Let's get this thing rolling. All right, we talked about it early on. Uh, the toughest tender is the first prize that we're gonna be giving out. And when we had mentioned this earlier, we said the average was around 15, 16 minutes, but it had to be perfect. Yep. 11 minutes, I don't think will ever be achieved again. So, the toughest tender, a check for $2,500 with a time of 17 minutes and 31 seconds goes to Jeff Head. Jeff. How about that? I believe we were even... Jeff is with Faust Masonry from Cape Girardeau, Missouri. The time was 17 minutes and 31 seconds. See, Jeff, you don't even know Brian, that we were in there you watching nice you while you're man. doing it. Yes, siree. Ladies and gentlemen, the and VP of Spec Mix, Mr. Brian Carney. How about this? Not bad for 52. That's what he just said. Not bad at all. In order. So, Sean, I'll let you hold on to all the money and pass on the 2500 to that man right there. It is my honor. Congratulations, man. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Thank We're you. going to have you walk right down here to the side. That's for you as well from Block Lauder. So um, perfect is what it needed and the best time. Did you have enough left over for the event? Oh yeah, plenty. And, and you're, you do the, you'll do it again right now? Just another day at the office. Just another day at the office. I like it, man. Well, listen, we're going to get some pictures. We've got some stuff from Marshalltown with you as well. Come on now. Oh, oh, hold on, Jeff. Come on Jeff. back here. We're not done yet. We yeah, want to give some more stuff we got, away. We got, we got How about $500 from Steel? They appreciate what you have done here today. Wow. They recognize your success. Wow. All right, don't go too far away. Stay right in there. We're going to try to stay centered right there. All right, here we go. For the Spec Mix Bricklayer 500, we're going to work our way from the bottom all the way to the top. In third place, with a brick count of 709, from Waco, Texas, Brazos Masonry, Louis Prado and tender Eduardo Ramirez. That's an impressive count right there. That's third place. Come on up, guys. Congratulations. Nice job. Nicely done. Good work today. All right, thank you. Everybody, thank you. Good job, good job. All right, stay on, on up down. here. We're yeah. gonna get Just some a little pictures bit. with Congratulations. you. Congratulations. That was a big number for third place. I'll tell you what, uh, pretty darn good. All right, moving up to second place right now. The brick count here was 716. Again, we talked about one deduction could move you from second to third, could take you out of first place. From Clearfield, Utah, Quick Trial Masonry, Scott Tuttle and Tender, Brian Tuttle, with a brick count of 716, second place. Come on up, guys. Another impressive wall. I know the Tuttles had high hopes. Sometimes it just doesn't go as planned, but I'm sure they gave it their all. But this is the ninth time that they have had their name called for one reason or another. First, second, third, craftsman, winner. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. Don't go anywhere. We got more stuff. Come here, guys, for a second. Second place, you guys, you, you did it again. How was it? He was really good. I think we had a really good day today. Yeah. It, did, it did really well, working hard. Again, you guys work together all the time. Your name up on the board again. How's it feel? It feels good. I couldn't do any better today. Like, good count and quality is good. So I feel I'm proud of it. 
All right, well, good luck. Congratulations, guys. Appreciate you being here and doing what you guys do. Congratulations. Legends. We're going to give away some keys now, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Where is Jacob Mendoza? Jacob, you know the routine. Jacob, you stand next to the RTV X1140, and we're going to have the winner come up to you and grab those keys. Sean, I'm going to go down here. Be safe. I will. All right. You ready? Yes, sir. Boy. Sure. Absolutely. Okay, this is a beautiful machine. You want to give us just a, a little quick overview of what this winner is going to get? Yeah, they're going to be getting an RTV X1140, North America's number one selling diesel utility vehicle. It's got the Kubota diesel engine, VHT transmission, easy to use, durable quality, which makes it perfect for customers and workers like you. All right, thanks, Jacob. We appreciate that. All right, the best wall, the most sellable wall, with a brick count of 680. Six, from Houston, Texas, Company Ranch Masonry, Mario Hernandez and Gerson Lux. That is awesome. Congratulations, gentlemen. Congratulations. You get the key, grab the keys, man. Turn around. I get a hug, yeah. Come here, come here. I get a hug. I've, I've never gotten a hug like that before. That is awesome. You also get the belt, you get the trophy, you get the engraved plaque. You get the five thousand dollar. A five thousand dollar check. Five hundred from Steel. has got a $500 gift certificate for you as well. So you're, you're gonna be looking sharp. No, that, that is all good stuff. Congratulations, guys. Take get a picture there with Jacob in front of the Kubota. And then there was one. And you know, I would be remiss if you noticed each of our winners, they have a loaded Marshalltown tool bag from Kim Haley in Marshalltown. They are so gracious. They load it up every year, the beaver tail brush, all sorts of tools in there. So Kim, thank you so much once again for all you do from Marshalltown. Guys, come on up on stage. We're going to get a group picture with everybody. Come on up on stage. Come on up here. Follow me. We're going to have to get them a shopping cart. Yeah, we're not done yet. Come on up, guys. They don't need a shopping cart. They got a Kubota. Throw everything in the back, turn it on, and drive it home. That is an awesome prize. Nick Banger, where are you? Nick, come on up here, man. You got oh, some no. keys stay in your hand? There. Stay down. Let him stay down there. Let's, let's get next to the truck. That's what I like. Whoever's going to win it, they're going to come running up to the truck to grab the keys. You ready, man? I am ready. You sure? Yes, I'm pumped. How do you feel like giving away these trucks, man? You know, it's very exciting for me. I mean, congrats again to all the competitors, and this is just an honor for Ford Pro to be able to give away a Super Duty to the, uh, the winner of the competition. All right, hey, awesome. Tom. Well, you know, it's funny as we were going, we were, as we were going through all, uh, what do we got? Go yep. ahead. Come on, up. stand over here, Nick. Come on over here. We want here to we see go. all those decals. We want to see the trophy. Yep. We want to do it all. All right, here we go. This is the keys to the truck. A brick count of 759. That's the adjusted brick count. The world's best bricklayer. For 2023, here in Las Vegas, for the Spec Mix Bricklayer 500, from Wisconsin, Kowalski Masonry, Michael Schlund, and tender Aaron Kowalski, you are the world's best bricklayer. Fantastic. Awesome. We got some excitement here. Nice job, guys. Nice job. Awesome. Nice job. 
Guys, you come on over here. You need, Nick's got to give away those keys. Hang on a second here. Nick, you got something to say? Yes, congratulations. This is awesome. And here are your keys. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Hang on a second here. All right, come on in here. Squeeze in here. Nick, you don't go away. Uh, how's it feel? Unreal. Can't believe it. You had a big support over there with that group from Wisconsin, man. Talk to me. Well, thank you, everybody over there. <laughs> Dude, you just won a Ford truck. I, I'm speechless. I can't believe it. <laughs> All right, Tom, I've given them the $5,000 check. We've given them the $500 from Steel. We've given them the $500 from Block Louder. Let's give them something else. Sure. Hoist that trophy up. Hoist over it your up head. high, Wisconsin! Get in there with your partner. Okay, I, I, I got to know, as, as he is speechless, he must have done pretty good today. He held his own. Held his own. 759 brick. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Sean, last year was 760. That seems to be the number for the big win. It was a very good-looking wall, too, and a lot of units in there. Thank you. Nicely done. What, what are we going to fill the trophy with later? Beer. Yeah, yes. there you go. That's what we want to hear. Hey, how about it, Wisconsin? How you doing over there? <laughs> the 21st annual Spec Mix Brick Lair 500 champion. <laughs> yeah, you want to give a little shout out, guys? I just got to thank this guy right here because he's not only my tender, but he's my boss. <laughs> and then when I started doing this, I don't know, six, seven, eight years ago, one of uh, original tender, Joe Sautner, He's battling cancer down in North Carolina. So if it wouldn't have been for Joe and this guy, I never would have been able to get into this. So This is for you, Joe. That's awesome. That's awesome. Guys, get up on stage. Let's take some group pictures. You are the champions. We'll get some more pictures in the truck. But ladies and gentlemen, they are the world's best bricklayer. Congratulations. I just want to thank everybody again for coming out to the Bronze Live for the 2023 Spec Mix Bricklayer 500 to determine the world's best bricklayer. You've been an amazing crowd. The sponsors are amazing. Thank you so much once again. We could not have done it without you. For everybody at Spec Mix, Quick Creed, Kubota, Marshalltown, Multiquip, Hydromobile, Belden, Stabila, Razorback, Steel, the MCAA, IQ, Hilti, Block Lotter, Prism. Thank you so much. It's because of you that we can put smiles on these faces and a new truck in somebody's driveway. Remember, if you want to be a part of this, go to specmix.com. Check out when the regionals are taking place. And who knows, you might be out here. Our champion will return as well as the top craftsman 
they get a free ticket to next year. Everybody else, they're gonna have to earn their way into a stall. Thank you again, everybody. Have a wonderful day for Sean O'Malley, for Will Scott, for Ryan Shaver, for Jim O'Connor. I'm Tom Clark, I am your host, and today we laid some brick. Have a great afternoon.